The following is a hoop ball presentation. What's up, everybody? I'm Najee Adams, and I'm Hunter Jacobs, and you're listening to the Hoop Ball Nets podcast. Thank you guys for listening to our COVID-19 response episode, basically going through everything that, all the ways in which COVID-19 affected us, and we hope you're all staying safe, healthy, and social distancing. Um, In this episode, we're basically, we have two episodes lined up. This one is going to be about the Bradley Beal rumors and all the antics that Spencer Dinwiddie's going on. We also get into like some MLB stuff and uh, the the rumors about the season returning on July 15th and what we think about all of that. And then the next episode that you're going to hear is going to be about our 2K20 simulation episode. I also wrote up an article about this simulation episode that you can go read and kind of just like base what we're talking about off of that you can choose to read the article or listen to us or do both if you want to it'll be linked somewhere in the description of the podcast and so yeah last year we did a 2k19 simulation episode this year 2k20 simulation episode but we'll explain more in that episode itself and so make sure you subscribe to the who bone that's podcast so you can keep up to date with everything that we're posting leave a five-star rating and review on itunes shout out to hawaiian Niles kona coffee company for sponsoring this podcast and every other Hootball podcast, and uh, yeah, you can follow us on Twitter at Hootball Nets. Let's get into it, Mr. Spencer Dinwiddie. He's been in the news for a slew of things recently. I guess first we can start with his his GoFundMe antics. Um, yes, so so he's he's very active on Twitter, as we know. I think and last, one day last he just decided we said that he was a good Twitter follow. Yes, he is. He is. And he decided to throw out there the idea of letting the fans pick where he plays after his contract ends. And they, the fans would need to raise $24 million in Bitcoin. Which is crazy. That is- and, and then he'd sign a minimum contract wherever the fans picked and in the picture for it he has himself in a Nets, Lakers and Clippers jersey. Because I guess he assumed that LA would be the preferred option for fans. And so I frankly I'm gonna be honest with y'all, I had no clue what this man was talking about up until maybe ten minutes ago. Because I I understood. I just never thought it was a reality that fans common people would raise 24 million dollars for him yeah why would anybody, maybe if it was lebron james why would anybody give that LeBron man james. 24 mil like do you understand how much that is 24 million dollars basically he was saying you give him 24 million dollars to cover what he would have lost not signing a long-term deal yes. with the team and he'll sign it up was, one year. Like, what? It was $24,632,630. I don't think he would have even gotten $632,630 <laughs> paying out the $24 million. I mean... And, it, like, then... that See, that causes a lot, of, a lot of unrest. You already know Kyrie does not care about his teammates at all. Oh that, that's just God. the first thing. So now that Dinwiddie's not even committed to staying with the Nets, what motive does Kyrie have to want him to stay with the Nets? I mean, you're not wrong. You find every single way to jab Kyrie that you can, but you're not wrong. I mean, I I personally, when I see stuff like that, I feel like, why even post that? Like, what what was the point? Like, did you really think you were going to get $24 million from regular civilians? I don't like. Obviously, and why, you're not going to do that. Why would you do that before this season has even ended? Why his contract isn't even up at the end of the why? year? He still because has a whole another year. He, yes, and and if they come back, the Nets are in the playoffs. Yeah, and they're going to play with Kyrie and KD and himself in the playoffs. Why would you not wait until after to even try this? I don't get it. It it doesn't make sense to me because 
I don't know what the end game was. So, obviously, Spencer Dinwiddie ended up taking down the post and ending the GoFundMe campaign. Because they got two thousand. Uh, he got just over a thousand dollars in two days. At that rate, he never would have touched twenty-four million. He never would have touched one million. And he was trying to downplay, like, "Oh, one K in two days is good." No, 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 it's not. That's it's not, not good. That's not that's at 15K all. Fifteen K in a month. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's ten hard. months. That's one hundred fifty thousand dollars in a year. That's one hundred eighty thousand dollars. So you don't even touch two hundred K of your total goal. Yeah, that's uh, see. Part of me feels like that can't be legal in the NBA like bylaws. Like the CBA can't allow that to happen. There's no way that was legal. So I feel like somebody. I don't know that they ever would expect someone to do that. Yeah, he said that he'll continue to push the boundaries of uh, of of because what can be done. I think he's trying to find things that they've never thought about, so that there's no rule to go against, like it. loopholes. Well, what's going to wind up happening is they're just going to have a meeting and make the rule to stop him. So, yeah, and and the thing they're, is, they're just going to wind up hating him. The, <laughs> the, the executives in the league are going to wind up hating him. It's just he he I don't he already did the thing with his contract and reinvesting it, and that they didn't want that to get approved, but it did. So why can't you just stop there? Sign a normal. Four-year, $100 million contract. Whatever team's going to sign him next, he'll start for them. Probably the Knicks or somebody that needs a point guard, the Suns. And the Knicks are drafting LaMelo Ball, so. And, uh, we'll see how the lottery treats them. <laughs> but, no, yeah, I completely agree. I, I get, like, I respect that. Then what he wants to, you know, push the boundaries of what can and can't be done by a basketball He's player. Be creative. Exactly, to prove that he's, like, more than just a basketball player. But at some point, like, there has to be some level of realism that comes along with that because I don't think it's realistic to, to get $24 million from from common folk. <laughs> like, like that's not happening. And so I feel like either the league told him, hey, uh, you know, you, you, this isn't – shut this down. And he realized, like, all right, I'm not going to get the, the goal anyway, so I might as well instead of trying to fight it. And so, yeah, Spencer Dinwiddie said that the league, he tweeted out that the league was going to return on July 15th. I don't know if he had some sort of inside knowledge or... Uh, well, I know that was what was rumbling around, and there's three different pathways to it. It's one where there's a couple regular season games and playoffs. There's one where it's straight into playoffs. There's a tournament-style postseason. Which there's... one would you prefer? I would like five regular season games and they go into the playoffs personally, but I would actually want it where there's five regular season games and then the tournament. Cause think of it this way for the five regular season games, a team like the Warriors, they do not care at all. He's going to throw like out the, the worst players. Care. He's not going to care. And that's why teams who are fighting for a playoff position like the Grizzlies, if they run into the Warriors, easy win. So it makes no difference. If you do the tournament, everyone's going to play. And it would be like the teams who are in the playoffs get a bye. And the teams outside of it play in to play playoff teams. And then the top teams get two buys. And it would wind up shaking out in like an NCAA tournament style way, I guess. But then once you get down to it, it would probably hit five and seven game series. I mean, for me personally, I would like the same exact thing because I feel like I don't want to just jump right into the playoffs because bottom line, teams are going to be extremely rusty after not having played for... Look, there are athletes that have kids. Someone like Tatum, I I have him on Snapchat. I watch his stories. He's with his son all the time. They're watching TV all the time, playing video games all the time. He's always with his son. He is most likely not in his top shape. It's just a fact. Trey Young, all he is is on Twitter, playing video games all the time. John Moran, Donovan Mitchell, Luka Doncic. Devin Booker. Sure, they probably work out, shoot around in their house. They are not. They're definitely not working as intensely as they did during the season. 
they're not going to be at the top of their game. That's five games won't even get them that, but at least it's something. Yeah, I definitely don't think it's fair to just tell them, all right, you guys haven't played since March. It's now July. Let's just, you know, hop right on into the playoffs. Like, that's definitely not fair. At least five regular season games just to get their feet under them, just to get back into the notion of playing NBA-level basketball. Yeah, and so that everyone's engaged, at least the tournament, like, give them some form of hope to have a Cinderella story. Like, like the Blazers or Pelicans or something can pull off an upset and wind up making the 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 playoff parts that play in series like and i know for give the, them something to play for like for the location they're they're trying to just have it all at disney. one location so that they're like, trying to have it at disney yeah so that it limits the amount of interaction that the athletes have with the outside Which, world that's the reason i think basketball is more equipped to come back rather than baseball because they have been with their families for months in quarantine, right? All they'd be doing is playoffs and whatever. It would be no more than two months. Yes, it's two months. Baseball sucks, has to play a whole hundred plus has game to season. Play an entire season. They would not be able to see their families for eight months, probably. And then on top of that, they're asking the players in baseball to take a pay cut, where the highest paid player is a retired Prince fielder. <laughs> uh, so you're asking Mike Trout, the icon of the game, to sit there and get two million dollars to have an MVP season and not see his family. I don't understand why they think the players would ever accept that. There's there's legends who are like, oh, you gotta play for the love of the game to give people some hope in the world. I mean, Look at it from their point of view. They're risking their health. They're not seeing their family, and they're the best at what they do, and they're going to get paid not as much as they would nearly see. Isn't it just – it's a percentage of the contract that they have, right? Like it's not It's not yeah. like a base for but everyone. It, no, it's – yeah, but it's nothing. Prince Fielder would get paid like four-something million, and that's – more yeah, than no, no, no. MVP. I'm saying though, like high. If if top tier players don't want to do it, why would somebody that makes like mid to low tier money in the MLB want to do that? Like that makes no yeah. sense for them. Blake Snell, Blake Snell, he said he would not do it. I wouldn't do he, it. Either. He wouldn't do it. Bryce Harper said he's right for saying he wouldn't do it. And then you have analysts. Stephen A. Smith was not happy with them. Um, I, but I don't. I don't really see the problem. Listen, Stephen A. Smith has a million plus dollar contract from ESPN. Dude. If they told yeah. that man, we're giving you half of uh, your, we're giving you twenty five thousand dollars, <laughs> and you still got to do first take every single day. He's not going to be happy. He's not doing he's, it exactly. The, he's no, not be happy. nobody is doing that. So for you to sit on the outside and and badger at them when it's their when livelihood, you look at it, not it's right. still their job. Yes, they're playing a game, but it's still their job. They have to be away from their family all the time, and it's their job. Basketball and hockey are two sports that only have playoffs left, really. So it makes sense that those two are going to come back and finish and and do what they have to do. Baseball, entirely different. Football, we'll see what happens with that season. I pray there's a football season. I believe they will come back and play. I mean... If they have to play without fans, they'll lose a lot of revenue. But I think they will be playing. And so, yeah, uh, NBA supposedly looking good to return right now sometime in July in Walt Disney. I think they're probably the second most likely sport. I, I said most, but I wasn't really thinking about hockey. Hockey already has a, a thing in place, a 24-team playoff bracket kind of that they they want to do so hockey's probably going to come back first and then basketball i'm fine i'm good if honestly it that would show some kind of hope in the world any sport i don't even watch hockey but just to see a a professional sport being played back on national television that i don't care i don't care what it is give me a nascar race is it nascar back NASCAR is on, yeah. yeah NASCAR, but think yeah. of it, they're in cars. Like. Yeah, you don't really get to see them. You, there's no difference between watching NASCAR and the Cars movie, so. 
<laughs> and so, yeah, that's that's what we have to say about the NBA and the MLB and our personal opinions on whether or not they should come back. I think we both agree that we want them to come back as long as the right safety precautions are taken. And then moving on to the Nets themselves, they've been in some 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 rumors for Mr. Beal, Mr. Bradley Beal, to add and as a third star. This was going on for a while. It just really came out that they actually were discussing it. So the rumor deal is really Dinwiddie, Lover, and two firsts as the base. That's the base for it. Then you can either add Jared Allen, Nick Claxton, and Torian Prince, or maybe another pick. But the the one I saw that was most likely would be Dinwiddie, Lavert, Allen, and two picks. I mean, Dinwiddie, Lavert. Let me think about that. Dinwiddie, Lavert, and Jared Allen. <laughs> And two first rounders, I'm assuming. That would mean absolutely nothing because they'll be at the end of the round because they're either theirs or the Clippers. So, what if they request a pick from after KD and Kyrie's contract is up? They wouldn't get it back. They would get nothing back other than Beal. So, then you get a, a crappy first round, two crappy first round picks that they'll probably use to trade someone else. They'll probably package John Wall in the first to get another star. And then Levert and Dinwiddie. See, I personally like Karis Levert a lot. I know you're not as high on him as I am, but I like no, Karis No, I think he's good, but I just don't think he was a third star. I, I think he was good. I think that – I see, all right, I don't want to get – Mis like misconstrued and and make it seem like I think he's anywhere as close to the level as Bradley Beal. Would I trade Karis Levert and two first round picks for Bradley Beal in a heartbeat? But Dinwiddie and Allen, you're basically trading your entire. I guess Dinwiddie's not really part of the young core, but your entire core outside of KD and Kyrie for Bradley Beal. Now we they had they would have Bradley Beal under contract until what 2023. 2022 player option for 23, but if they're winning, there's no reason for him to leave because he'll be making a lot of money. So for the next, what, two, three seasons? For the next three seasons, you'd have them. Two seasons, you'd have them with Kyrie and KD. You, and what a, a, a crucial part of this that I really think is important for the Nets is you have two superstars already. KD, Kyrie, two top 10, top 15 players in the NBA, obviously. Neither one of them is durable. Both of them are very, very, very much so injury prone. You add Bradley Beal, who's one of the best scorers in the entire NBA. This season, since January 1st, nobody has scored as many points as Bradley Beal. And he's, oh, I got something to say about that. And he still got snubbed in the All-Star game. But that's besides the point. One of the most durable NBA stars that can be. He plays 80 games at least all he plays at least 80 games in most of the seasons he's been in. I think although he, he was a couple very injury prone early in his career, he's definitely gotten over that. And so to have a durable superstar that you can rely on and lean back on while he will literally be the Clay Thompson. That's exactly. What, that's what everyone's saying. KD is KD. Steph is Kyrie, but or Kyrie is Steph, but he's not. But that's the closest comparison you can get. And then Clay and Beal don't miss games, play the most minutes, and just go out there and be a dog for their team. I think. Now, with all that being said, I think I would make the deal. I don't know if I if I would end up regretting trading Karis. I don't think I would regret trading Spencer Dinwiddie or Jared Allen. Karis is the big part of the deal for me. But if I'm getting Bradley Beal for. Three years, two of them being with KD and Kyrie. I think we have a pretty good shot at a chip, so I would take the deal. What about so, you? If they have to give up all three of them, I would do it. If if they could find a way to move Allen to Claxton and give up another second or two seconds or something, that would be the best offer. Um, Dinwiddie is probably not going to be able to stay after his contract ends. So might as well upgrade to Bradley Beal. Um, Lavert's going to need to get paid soon, so there's no point in holding on to him. 
And Bradley Beal averaged 30 points and missed the All-Star game, which is probably the biggest snub in the history of the game. <laughs> um, I don't understand how you let Kyle Lowry 18, 5, and, and 8 make the game, or 19, 5, and 8 make the game over him. Even in Middleton, shouldn't have made the game over him. Sabonis, good season, shouldn't have made the game over him. Don't care. Yeah, that's Bradley when I Gale think the, 30. the whole 30. team success leading to all-star games is a little bit overrated. Because there's no way Bradley Beal is in an all-star despite the Wizards you, being You garbage. start Trey Young in the game, but Bradley Beal doesn't make the game. Exactly. Well, well, what's exactly. the deal with that? I, I don't understand. It's not even like he shoots bad. He shoots better percentages than Kyle Lowry. So I will never understand why he got snubbed. Kind of makes me mad for him. But I would do the trade if I was the Nets. Three years of Kyrie, Beal, and KD should easily win you the East for three years in a row. So, Yeah, and then if you win at least two out of three championships, you could care less that you don't have Karis LeVert. Even if he's averaging also, if that 30 happens, on the KD Wizards. he is one of the best players of all time. I mean, Just yeah, he would have what? Now. He'd have what, five chips? Four. Four chips? He only won one Two with the... Oh, I thought you said if they went three chips back to back to back. No, if they win, if they win two. Oh, yeah. If they win two of those three. If they win two of the three, yeah, he had four. If they win all three and he goes five and one total in with, the... With five, the with five finals MVPs. Yeah, because he, he's winning a finals MVP every time he's in it, so... Yeah, he would be a, he would be a demon if he went five and one. That's tough. And even if you want to, even if he did that, and you want to discount the Warriors win because ah, uh, yeah, he joined the seventy. Look, if if they meet the Lakers next year, and they beat them, I don't think LeBron has much left after that. I don't think LeBron has much left in the tank after. Uh, uh, what this is year seventeen? I give him until year. I want to say 20. I give him a tier until year 20 until he starts going down. No, I think he'll be good down. for a couple more years, but I don't think he'll be able to carry as easily. He'll need Anthony Davis to do a lot of work. Yeah, no. I mean, right now, LeBron can't just carry. He, there's no, he, if, if Anthony Davis got Every injured. Every time Anthony Davis is out, they lose. Yeah, if Anthony Davis got injured for an extended period of time, the Lakers would not be what what are they they were like 49 and 14 or something like that they they were they were they had an they insane had 20 record. losses at least easily if ad missed missed a lot of time but bottom line i think that if the nets can get bradley beal without giving up kd or kyrie regard like and obviously do it i don't care the, what it is for the people saying that they have no bench depth did the Miami Heat have bench depth not named Ray Allen and Mike Miller? Did the Warriors have bench depth not named old Sean Livingston and Andre Iguodala? That's and, all they had. And let's That's be all honest. They had last year. Let's be honest. So, if the Nets get Bradley Beal, KD, and Kyrie, what vet isn't going to want to sign a vet minimum to come live in New York and win a championship? And on top of that, their four is still Tory and Prince. Their five is still DeAndre Jordan. It's not like those are bad players. Yeah, Tory and bench, Prince is a little iffy, but <laughs> I think he, I think he'd be better with all of them playing, though. Yeah, there would be no eyes on him. He'd just be taking open threes all day. And then you have Joe Harris. Nope, he's gone. Never mind. Yeah, he would definitely have to hit the deck. <laughs> he would be gone. They would. They have um. Rodion's Crooks on the bench still, Jean, and he's uh, not bad. I, I don't I don't care what people say. Rodion's Crooks is not bad. He's a serviceable um, bench player. I I do think that there's going to be a few vets that sign with them if we're if we're talking seriously. Um, someone like Chris Chioza, not bad, not bad at all. He, he was he was solid in the games that he played. Nick Claxton will still be there. He'll be the backup center. I think the bench would be good enough that they wouldn't blow every game. Bro, they would pick up somebody like Jamal Crawford on a vet min. 
Somebody like not, not even not even Iman him. Shumpert gonna, on a vet min. Not even like, him. There's gonna be people better than that that they can get. But at a minimum, bro, Jamal Crawford can still come off the bench in a year from now and give you 13. 13 a game. Easy. Iman Shumpert I mean, yeah, can still lock up. That he, the reason no one signed him is because he has no defensive capabilities. But I mean, yes, but if you're if you're stuck between Chris Chioza, you're signing. Okay. Just just think about a person who, who might take a min so they could win and 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 uh, looking at this list, I see Jeff Teague maybe as a possibility. Um, Jeff Teague could take a low contract. I could see maybe Jordan Clarkson. Nah, Jordan Clarkson, Jordan Clarkson he going crazy on the Jazz. And he's still young. He not not young, but like young enough. I don't know if he would take. Maybe him in. Joe Harris would want to come back. I don't think he is though. Um, nah, a team like the Lakers or the Bucks would give him the bag. I think I could definitely see Jay Crowder. Oh, for sure, a hundred percent. Davis Bertans, maybe. Maybe uh, he'll take a, a sharpshooter's cut. Um, someone like Justin Holiday. Oh, definitely. Like and those aren't even those are good bench players. Oh uh, yeah, if you combine all those people we just said, that's top half of the league in bench scoring, bench production at least. Like you're 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 getting all you need is you just need half capable players to get on the court and not blow a lead for and ten minutes then, at a time while KD like Beal Jeff and Green Kyrie and Reggie rest. Jackson too, who are playing on minimums this year. Yeah. Reggie Jackson is a starting point guard on at least five NBA teams. <laughs> like he's he's not terrible. He's not great, but he's not terrible. What about someone like Derrick Rose? He'd cost too much. And I don't think he. Yeah, you're right. I, I don't think he would take them in. Shabazz Napier return. Probably my guy. Probably, probably he would definitely return. Isaiah Whitehead. Austin Rivers. <laughs> Austin Rivers could terminate his contract. He has a player option. Austin but he's, he's pretty cocky, so I don't know. I always feel like Austin Rivers is overrated. No, he's a good bench point guard, but he he's he's cocky. Uh, Bryn Forbes, if he decides to leave the Spurs, would be an amazing signing. He's similar to Joe Harris. True. Someone that I always liked, but he definitely would not sign on a, a small contract, like a minimum, is Landry Shamit. I love Landry Shamit. He is nice. And nobody ever... He, he's knocked down. He's knocked down. And nobody ever pays him the time of day. But he's nice. It's crazy how many players are going to be free agents. I mean, it's not insane, but there's A.D. Drummond, DeRozan, Gordon Hayward. There, there's some good, good players. I think Hayward's going to opt in, and so is DeRozan, because they're getting big money. AD's going to opt out, but then the Lakers are going to give him the bag, and he's going to come back. I don't know what Drummond's going to do. He can't, he's be, definitely he, the Cavs. he can't be happy on the Cavs. Yeah, Detroit did him wrong. Wait till you see what Detroit does in our 2K simulation. They went crazy. Oh. Oh. And so, yeah, that's going to end this episode. We hope you all enjoyed. Remember... Stay tuned for the 2K20 simulation episode. It's going to be a really fun episode to listen to. You can go read it, like I said. Look in the description of either the tweet that was posted. It'll either be in there or in the description of the podcast. Probably both, though, so you can read along or listen. Let us know your thoughts, your opinions. Shout out to Wine House Cone and Coffee Company for sponsoring this podcast and every other Hoop Ball podcast. Follow us on Twitter at HoopBallNets. You can follow us individually on Twitter. I'm at Adams underscore. Hunter is at Hunter underscore JKR. They're both in the description of the podcast. And, uh, yeah, we hope you're staying safe. Hope you enjoyed the episode. And we'll talk to you next time. This has been a HoopBall presentation.